morning, everyone. So uh, my name is Jian Wang from Health Canada. So uh, first I want to thank uh, uh, SH, uh, you know, um, the conference uh, committee to invite me for, uh, for, for the presentation. So this morning I'm going to do the non-clinical safety evaluation a comparison between SCH S6 and SCH M3. So this slide shows the overview, uh, what I'm going to talk about. So the purpose of conducting non-clinical studies, SCH M3 R2 guidance document and SCH S6 R1 guidance document for small, uh, for large molecules for biologics. So then I'm going to discuss the issues for non-clinical studies conducted for biological drugs, all right? So I'm not going to go through very detail because, uh, you know, the guidance document has laid out what should be done and what should not be done for each type of drugs. Uh, however, I will provide some, the, the key comparison and also concerns and more for biological drugs, large molecules, all right? I guess we all know that why we do non-clinical studies. So uh, for the drug development, so we will do phase one, phase two, phase three trials. So then we will, you know, when it's ready, so the drug companies will apply for marketing authorization to different uh, countries or jurisdictions, right? So um, before you initiate human trials, so the non clinical studies should be conducted. So mainly for two purposes. So first, to do non clinical studies to support each phase of clinical trials, right? And then secondly, to support approval for new drugs, marketing authorization. So there is a definition by FDA, right? So what, you know, what does that mean for non-clinical laboratory studies? So I think the definition is on the slide. Uh, you may just want to go through the slides and read it. So it's basically that the non clinical studies, what we are talking about is for the regulatory purpose. You may start doing animal studies at a very early stage and for proof of concept, right? So that may not be, you know, for the regulatory requirements. It's more for the drug development and you want to identify a candidate drug, it's really uh, going to work as, you know, based on the animal models, based on disease models, right? So there are, as we said, there, there is a, you know, to support clinical trials, to support marketing authorization, but when you do non-clinical studies, so basically first you want to identify the drug candidates from you know pharmacological properties, right? So you're going to look at pharmacokinetics, and you're looking at pharmacodynamics, and how does the, the drug candidate, uh, you know, going to work, right? So then you need to do some comparative physiological uh, studies, and to make sure that. The information data you collect from animal uh, study can be is relevant to human and it can be extrapolated, right? So the second main goal is to understand the toxic, you know, the toxicological profile of the drug candidate. So you really want to establish a safe initial dose level for the first, you know, in human trial, right? So that's very critical. So you need to know what would be the safe 
those margin and you can use for human study. And also through non clinical studies, you're going to identify the target, the drug target or the adverse reactions is potentially going to cause and for which organ, right? So therefore, when you do clinical trials, so you can monitor the safety profile and the toxicity for the different organs and also different type toxicities, such as genotoxicity, carcinogen, and the repro studies, right? So these are the main purpose for doing non clinical studies. So SCH guidance, there are quite a few, uh, you know, uh, SCH guidance, provide guidance for non clinical studies. What we are talking about is today is about SCH M3, okay? So the purpose of this document is to recommend international standards for harmonization for the non clinical study to support human clinical trials in the marketing authorization. Why we want to do this? Because when a drug company applied for marketing, you know, well, first for clinical trials and then for marketing purpose to the different jurisdictions, different countries, each country in the past, they may have a different requirements, right? So it's quite a heavy burden for pharmaceutical companies because they have to meet, meet each jurisdictions, each country's requirement. So SEH pretty much just to say, okay, you know, let's have a harmonization. So we have a common understanding what type of study we should do, you know, for the time, for the types of the studies. And this guidelines applies to the situ, you know, the situations yearly encountered during the conventional development of pharmaceuticals. And it should be viewed as providing general guidance for drug development. Why we say that? Because at very beginning, I think the purpose is for small molecules. So we say pharmaceuticals, right? But then eventually that it covers for biological drugs. So, um, so it's a general guidance and uh, which kind of guide you to do appropriate non clinical studies prior to each phase of clinical trials and throughout the clinical development. So that's basically is the purpose of this guidance document. And for very specific requirement, you can always go through individual SEH guidance document. So this slide shows you the different stage or different phase of, um, you know, that non clinical study need to be conducted. So as I indicated, so first you're going to um, do these exploratory studies, you know, which is really find out, that, you know, if this drug candidate has some, um, you know, pharmacological or biological effect. So that's the concept, you know, uh, the proof of concept. So you may have a disease model and uh, you can to do, you know, very fundamental uh, studies. So then you, you know that this drug candidate is going to work. So you move to the next step. So you're going to uh, look at the GLP uh, you know, based on the, you know, the good laboratory practice, you do, the, you're going to conduct certain type of, uh, you know, non clinical studies to meet regulatory requirements. So, so these are, so for the phase one, before you start the phase one, definitely you're going to do a lot of non clinical studies. So that's, you know, for the safety of the study subject. So you're going to do it. So, so then you continue to do this non study to support each phase two and the phase three until that you apply for marketing authorization. So at this stage, basically is, you know, generally is going to be the long-term study 
carcinogen study and repro studies. So this is kind of the list, you know, it is general list, what type of you know, non clinical studies recommended, uh, I mean covered by M3 uh, guidance document. So, you know, in, which is include um, safety pharmacology, single, you know, single dose, repeat dose, tox studies, uh, toxic kinetic and the non-clinical pharmacokinetic studies, genotox, CRSI uh, studies, repro, you know, repro studies, and uh, some, there are some special studies which is not going to be required for all pharmaceuticals, but is going to be conducted case by case, like a phototoxicity studies, which is the uh, ICH guidance document, and immunogenistic studies, which also has ICH guidance document, and ju uh, juvenile animal studies. And uh, also, you know, there is abuse potential studies. So it really depends on what type of the nature of the product. So you may have to do additional non clinical studies to support that type of drugs and in clinical trials and uh, for marketing authorization. Yeah. So you just, those are, you know, the, going to be case by case. So you just have to to know it and communicate with the regulator to see uh, what additional you know, studies are needed. So this slide based on SHM3 and the breakdown that you know, the non clinical studies required at each phase of clinical trial that generally you need to do it to support the clinical trial, right? So as I said, there are more, you know, general talk studies required for phase one. So there is going to be, when you, because this is a single dose study, so you probably just do, you know, a, a short term, like a two weeks study. Uh, but when you move to phase two, that phase two, you're going to dose patients or subjects with uh, repeat dose. So to support the repeat dose clinical trials, so you need to do repeat those animal studies, which is going to be lots. The duration of the study will be longer and based on what type of, uh, uh, you know, the dosing regimen, you know, going to be proposed for human study. Uh, so the slides shows here is from two weeks to six months. Uh, so when you move to phase three, and likely you're going to do even much longer clinical trials. So then you need a longer, you know, a duration of non, the non clinical studies to support that. And at phase three, you may also include the, you know, the female subject, and then you need to do, you know, both male and female, and you have to, because it's a long-term exposure, so you need to do those <coughs> relevant non clinical studies to support particularly for repro studies, uh, which is kind of critical. Yeah, at least for small molecules. So as I said, as, um, you know, uh, SCH M3 is basically to give you the guidance for types and timing of non clinical studies. And also at the beginning I said, so first, you know, objective is to support the conduct of clinical trials, right? So, and if we talk about animal species, I think that's what we always say, you know, how many species we're going to do? For <coughs> small molecules, there should do the two um, species, rodent and non-rodent, okay? For the clinical trials, if you, you know, clinical trials is going to last for two weeks, your animal studies for both species should be two weeks, right? So if your clinical trial is going to be conducted between two weeks to six months, so then you have the same duration, uh, you know, for the, uh, you know, for the non clinical studies in two species. So, so if you do the, you know, the human trial will be six months, so you need six months uh, animal studies. 
And if you, clinical trials is going to be last longer than six months. So then you need to do six months uh, non clinical studies for rodent, but then you need to do nine months for non rodent, right? So this is really, if we're going to talk, you know, I'm going to talk about later. This is really for small molecules, right? When you do the large molecules, you're not going to do six months is, is the maximum. I mean, sorry, you're not going to do nine months. The maximum is six months. So the next phase of animal studies is to, you know, it's the repeat dose talk study to support marketing authorization. So marketing authorization at that time, the non clinical studies requirement is a duration of the study will be longer. Uh, so, but for the maximum duration is still going to be, you know, for the non rodent will be nine months. So these are, uh, there are differences. So it, it's also, you know, depends on how the treatment pattern and the duration and how long you're going to treat uh, patients. So definitely for the chronic uh, patient population, I mean, the chronic uh, treatment, that longer animal studies will be required for repeat dose and also those report, you know, uh, carcinogen study will be required to support uh, that type of uh, pharmaceuticals. Okay, so the guidance also is, as I, you know, I said, is providing general guidance for the timing and the types of uh, non clinical studies should be conducted to support mainly for oral formulation or oral dosing, okay? So, but we also have a dermal application. So there are two types of dermal. One type of dermal application is the drug is, just, you know, is going to stay at the local. It's not going to, uh, you know, uh, penetrate uh, the skin, you know, the dermal. Uh, so there is a other type is a transdermal. So the dermal, the dermal application is for the local, you know, ap application. Transdermal is use the, you know, the skin to deliver in a drop into the blood, you know, system. So then there's going to be a different requirement, different type of animal studies, right? So then you have an ocular. So you're going to give the drops to the eyes. So what type of animal study is going to be required? So this table is give you kind of general list, right? Uh, what should be conducted, okay? Uh, so a lot of, you know, uh, routinely that the, you know, the non clinical study required by oral formulation or dosing will not be required for the eye drops. So ICHM3 recommendation for types of timing studies are most directly applicable to systematically administered small molecules, as I said. And, and also the, you know, this kind of treatment, the, the guidance document is for the treatment non-profile, sorry, non-life threatening conditions. So there are some exceptions. Right, so first exceptions for the less threatening conditions. ICA journey has one guidance for that kind of situation, which is for oncology, advanced stage of oncology. Uh, it, it's not the, the topic for today, but I think that's also uh, another guidance document parallel with M3, gave you idea what type of uh, non clinical studies should be conducted for oncology drug, right? So actually pretty much reduced, particularly for the long-term study because the lifespan for uh, patients uh, is not going to be as long as for some type of other chronic disease, right? So therefore, non clinical studies 
are required are different. Um, it's also, you know, as, as I said, the skin, the eyes. So I show you that table. So they are not going to be, re, you know, the non studies is not going to be required as much as um, the, the oral dosing. Uh, so what we're going to cover is biological drugs, right? So there are a lot of exceptions for biological drugs. So SCH does have you know, S6 or and S6R1 addendum and provide some guidance. And I think that's the, going to be the interest of today's, you know, presentation. So as I said, the M, you know, SCH M3 uh, provide general uh, guidance for biological drugs. So only with regard, re regard to timing of non clinical studies, okay, which is rel you know, relative to clinical drug development. So it's not really about the types because the types are going to be different. It's the timing we're still going to follow SH and 3 for biological drugs. Right? But the purpose, the primary goal of non clinical studies for biological drugs is essentially the same as for pharmaceuticals, right? So there is some list here, you know, this bullet point say, you know, it's when you, when you try to investigate a biological drugs in non clinical studies is also to, you know, the purpose to identify an initial dose, safe dose, right? And a sequential dose. Uh, in human and to identify potential target organs and the physiological system for toxicity uh, and provide guidance for safety, uh, monitoring and the risk management during clinical trials and also to identify potential at risk population, right? And even, you know, which organ uh, because the, the biological drugs, uh, you know, are a little bit different uh, from uh, small molecules because they are really targeted. Most of these biological drugs will be targeted. Okay. So why, when you look at ICH guidance document and the full, you know, the list of guidance document for the non clinical studies or, uh, you know, the safety study or for the efficacy guidance document, they only prepared, you know, identify the one guidance document for biological drugs, which is ACH S6. Of course, they have some quality, you know, the, you know, SCH, uh, you know, the Q-tab of guidance, which is, you know, discuss uh, biological drugs uh, extensively. But I think for the non clinical study, this guidance document, SH6, is the only one. Why? Because biological drugs are quite different from pharmaceuticals. I think many of our audience probably already know that. Uh, so there is a species specific. So, you know, when, you know, uh, because uh, these, the, the drug candidate, for the biological drugs nowadays, most likely is humanized or human protein, right? So you give this humanized or human protein to animals and because they're human protein, the animal species may not have a binding, may not have a receptor, so it may not work, right? Uh, so we're going to discuss about that. So is a species specific. And because it's a human protein, so when you give to animal, it's going to be immunogenic, right? So, and also the metabolic pathway is not metabolized by, you know, traditional uh, people, you know, people, uh, people 50, and uh, it's degraded. And, uh, and the half-life is much longer, particularly for those monoclonal antibodies. And there is a target immediate drug dis disposition, and which is also give you nonlinear pharmacokinetic profile. 
So in terms of safety, it's more related to exaggerate the pharmacology because you know there is a target to that you know the banding side that triggers some uh, you know uh, pharmacological or toxic you know toxicity reactions, right? And finally, I mean, well, maybe we should discuss much earlier is that to make these, you know, this drug, biological drugs are made through most likely most, you know, through the uh, recombinant DNA technology. It's quite complex manufacturing process and the control, you know, is, you know, kind of challenging. Uh, so, but the formulation is quite simple, you know, quite simple. Uh, they are injectables, not like, uh, you know, small molecules, oral formulation, then you have delayed, modified release, you know, it, it's quite complicated. But anyway, they are quite different. So that's why there's different uh, requirements for the non clinical studies. So what would be the fundamental issues and the concerns for biological drugs? So by their very nature, the so study in non clinical studies are uh, you know, would be a lot of time or would be considered the hurdles right, in the development of biological drugs. Uh, it's, you know, especially for some uh, very rare disease, right? Metabolic, genetic, uh, you know, inher inheritive disease. Uh, and also we know that due to their nature, the conventional approach to top studies or, you know, for pharmaceuticals may not be appropriate for biological drugs. So unlike, most likely that the, the non clinical studies required for large molecules are less than small molecules, right? So you don't really do a full battery non clinical studies. So biological activities together with a species or tissue specific of many biological drugs often preclude standard toxicity studies, right? And commonly used species like rats, dogs, you know, the, because they are not relevant. They have no binding sites, they have no receptors. So non-human primate may be the only relevant species, right? So which is going to say, well, how many we have to do, because they are quite expensive and uh, nowadays and a lot of uh, movements say you should not do use, you know, these type of animals to do this kind of studies. So there is a lot of limitations and also it's quite expensive to do uh, studies in non-human primates. And you may not, if you don't do enough um, studies that you may not have, uh, you know, a good understanding of, of toxicity profile of the drug candidate. Uh, so biologics may prevent, you know, as I said, you know, special, uh, may present special issues to be addressed in non clinical studies, such as immunogenicity. So as I said, is a human protein or humanized protein we will give to animals is going to produce uh, trigger immunogenicity reactions. Okay, so then you have you may have the neutral you know anti uh, neutralizing anti drug antibody produced in animal studies, which is prevent you to do a long term repeatable study, and also um, the, the the drug candidate. It could be uh, an immune modulator, such as nowadays we know that a very popular, uh, you know, PD1, PDL1 checkpoint inhibitors, right? So they really ma manipulate the immune system. So you're going to see specific uh, immune mediated uh, adverse reactions. You normally you won't see uh, in other type of pharmaceuticals. Right. So, as I said, uh, you know, so, but when we say, okay, the human protein will trigger immunogenicity reactions in animals, right? but are they really relevant 
if you give this protein or drug candidate to human, because in human, they are not going to have this problem. You know, the animals will say, this is the farm proteins so I'm going to produce antibody to against it. But in human, they are not. So that's why when you do animal studies with this type of you know, drug candidate, when you see the amino reactions, probably it's going, not going to be relevant to human studies. So you still can move forward to conduct human trials or with some cautions, right? So, so we said that animal studies and the animal species may not be relevant. So how you, you know, identify relevant species, because if it's not relevant, you study something and say, yeah, there is no problem, there is no reactions, there's no safety concerns. Actually, because there is no binding, there is no, no receptors, it's not going to trigger any biological, physiological reactions. So that's why you don't see anything. I think there is very early uh, cases, you know, at uh, the people may not, you know, w w when we first have these biological drugs, you know, developed, the people may not have a full understanding of how these animal species, the study is going to predict for humans. So they probably say, yeah, we, we don't see anything. And so they actually the drug, the animal studies uh, use the animal species, which is not relevant. So first, if you do the biological studies, you have to identify which animal species will be uh, relevant, right? So you have to say this is pharmacologically relevant and also characterize potential difference in potency. That means that two, one is difference be between animal species and the difference between animal and also human, right? So when you try to identify a relevant animal species, you start with the target expression, the sequence homology, right? So how similar that, you know, the, the, the human compare with uh, animal species, that, you know, how similar that candidates with a, a, a similar, you know, um, um, you know, a, a similar molecule that naturally for the animal, right? So then you're going to use the tissue bending. So characterize, you know, if there is a bending uh, of this human protein in animal species and do some, uh, you know, functional bioactivity assays, right? So you can use both, uh, when we say non king studies, you can use both animal or and also human cells or tissues, right? Uh, you are not going to use a human to do this kind of non cure study, but you can you can use human cells and tissues. So eventually, when you identify yes, there is a binding, there is similarity, you can move on to do in vivo pharmacology studies. So that's the stage you're going to uh, follow the you know ICH guidance to do the animal studies to support the clinical trials. So for ICH um, S6 guidance, all right, uh, there is R1. So there is an original document, there is R1. So that's addendum to support, to address some um, common uh, questions after people using the, you know, SCH S6, they still probably have issues. They still have, uh, you know, the people have, may still have a different perception, understanding uh, the scope of animal studies for biological drugs. Uh, so the sponsor may go to different jurisdictions. The, jur the jurisdictions are going to ask a different uh, studies. Oh, the scope of studies. That's, that's still quite common, you know. This probably still happens nowadays. But we try to be harmonized as much as possible. So SCHS6 basically say for the species, I say, you know, is the default of two species, right? If you can identify relevant two species, so that's good. You know, you can use two species for the short-term study. But for long-term study, 
basically in one species, it should be good enough for six months. And if you cannot find two relevant species, so then you just use one species, that should be sufficient. Uh, and, you know, the, the guidance say, well, uh, you know, you can use uh, homologous product, you know, from animal. If you say you really want to do two species, that's another option, but the guidance say for biological drugs, it's not necessary, right? So you don't have to do that. Um, if you have one, you know, there are two relevant species. One is in rodent, one is, uh, you know, non-human primate. You can use the, you know, um, the, the rodent, right? That, that should be fine as well. So there is a detail you can go through that guidance document. So then selection of high dose level. I think I have another slide, in, you know, uh, in later to compare the dosing, right? So at this stage, so what's the dose you should give for animal, for biological drugs when you do animal studies? So the guidance say that a dose which gives the maximum uh, intended pharmaceutical effect, which is means in human, right? Or a dose with, which gives up to tenfold exposure, multiples, to be achieved in clinic, okay? Which when you look at the small molecules, they said 50 fold. You use a 50 fold of, you know, uh, you know the, the dose you use in, in human study. Okay, so that part, so this part are different from small molecules. Uh, so frequency or route of administration, which is quite similar to small molecules as mimics, you know, intended dose. If you, in clinical trials, you're going to use in vitro uh, injection. So then you use, sorry, the, yeah. Uh, uh, no, it's, it's uh, intra, uh, uh, intramuscular. So if you do uh, intramuscular injection in human, so then you should use uh, animal studies with the same route, right? So chronic study duration, as I said, you maximum study is six months is sufficient. Longer study is not required. And also it may not be feasible, feasible as we said, that because animals will produce, likely is going to produce uh, anti-drug antibodies. So you can really do uh, uh, a long-term study for particular for the antibody uh, type of biological drugs, right? Uh, for the repro study, uh, which is guidance for uh, SCH6, uh, um, clearly states that you just need to do a one single enhanced pre and postnatal development study in non-human primate, okay? So that's only one. So the separate repro study, embryo fetal development study uh, is not recommended. Okay, so genotox study, generally speaking, biological drugs by nature it is not a genotoxic, so it's not going to be required. Okay, carcinogen study, generally speaking, are not required for biological drugs. However, we have to remember, there are product-specific assessment uh, for uh, carcinogenic potential may still be needed. And particular for immunomodulators and growth factors, right? So these are because the nature of the product and the use pattern because they are, tend to be uh, used for chronic disease, uh, long, sometimes half-life, you know, the lifetime treatment. So you need to do the CAR-C study. 
So for all these studies, sometimes for the repro study, the sponsor may not always do it. But the generally speaking, if they know that it potentially a drug may be excreted, you know, excreted from um, milk, then they will at least if they don't do the repro study, they're going to at least put into the product label and warn people, you know, this is the worst case scenario. You're going to tell people this end user this drug may cause, you know, some passing through milk may cause some concerns. So I think the next we're going to do some, um, well, consideration when evaluating biological drugs. So, so we, we need to understand the difference between small and large molecules. So as I said, the dose are different. You know, small molecule 50 dose, the large molecules, the maximum, you know, clinical uh, effect or tenfold exposure. Metabolic, and for small molecules, it's classical biotransformation studies, you know, pharmacokinetics. You're looking at the, uh, you know, how these drug is going to be metabolized uh, if there are, you know, uh, the pre-drug, you know, uh, metabolized will be uh, from call, you know, is, is going to be bioactive or not. Uh, for large molecules, they are, they are not really metabolized, they are catabolized. They break down into um, amino acids. So, so then, you know, uh, the study are different. All right, so uh, you're going to look at uh, the behavior of the biological drugs, you know, in the biological matrix and uh, possible influence of binding proteins. And also, as we said, the longer half-life is going to, you need to pay attention. The drug-drug interactions, uh, you're going to, when you develop small molecule, you, you know, based on that, uh, SCHM3, you're going to see a lot of uh, interaction studies, which is not really for large molecules because this P450 pathway is not going to have an impact for that drug is degraded or catabolized, right? But they still have the drug like a, some um, antibodies may trigger the cytokine release. The cytokine itself have impact on the P450 enzyme. So it may have some effect for the drug-drug interactions. So you really have to look at the case by case, right? So this is kind of comparison, what type of study, uh, you know, compare small molecules, large molecules, as we discussed, the metabolic profile, definitely you need to do for the molecule small molecules, and uh, it's not going to be required for biological drugs. Um, this we're talking about in vitro metabolic profile, right? And also comparative in vivo animal human metabolic metabolism data. Uh, it, is required for small molecules, not required for large molecules at a different time point, right? So then you look at the cardiovascular respiratory central nervous study, you know, the system uh, studies. Uh, prior to phase one, will be required for small molecules, but not going to, generally speaking, is not always required for large molecules. It depends. So for cardiovascular toxicity, uh, it depends on uh, you know the nature of the biological drugs. But usually, will be included in the animal studies. So the general toxicity, we compare small molecules with large molecules. A small molecules will be two species, and for large molecules, yes, the one species would be considered acceptable because sometimes you really don't have two species available, right? So these are very special studies which is required 
uh, well, may not be very that special for small molecules, but they are not required be, for large molecules because these are the genotoxicity. So it doesn't matter you do in vitro or in vivo, it's not going to be required for um, biological drugs. Okay. So repro study, uh, you have to do a full battery uh, repro studies for small molecules, but very likely you just need to do one, you know, in hast, you know, pre post natal um, development study would be enough. Carcinogenesis study, yes, uh, for the, you know, for small molecules, if they are, you know, for the chronic use, uh, will be required. And the timing is as a marketing approval. So that means pre market authorization, the carcinogen study need to be completed for small molecules, but uh, it's going to be case by case for large molecules. So um, let's say there are some special situations that need to be considered. So one is that uh, the target expressed at low, uh, no uh, low levels in healthy animals, right? So that means you don't have relevant uh, species uh, if there are normal animals. So in that case, you may have to use some data that you collected when you use, um, you know, the disease model, right? So, you know, during the early stage improve our concept. So that gave some value and for you move on to the next step and to convince regulatory you know, bodies. Right? So when you have no relevant species, you also don't have a disease model, what are you going to do? So you can use homologous molecules. So if you say, okay, I have a human protein, but I have no species available, but there is, could be a similar animal protein that you can study and to give you, or you can make that you know, uh, that particular animal proteins so will give you some idea of the safety and the mechanism of action. You can also use transgenic animals, human cell assays. Uh, transgenic animals, uh, well, I think if you don't have any relevant species and that molecule is really new, nobody knows how it's going to work. So the transgenic uh, animal models would be required. So uh, when you don't have a full, fully, you know, understanding of toxicity profile because there are limitations, are you going to stop there? Say I'm not, you know, because the drug candidate, the biological drug candidate could be quite promising. So what are you going to do? You may still be able to move to human studies based on all evidence or data or justification you have and then but you you need to make sure that uh, you uh, take you know very cautionary steps make sure that you know you do the stepwise dosing from low to high and make sure that there is no undue risk to human uh, so there is a very specific uh, toxicity profile that uh, um, you know, caused by, you know, the toxicity profile or adverse reactions, as we discussed, is, uh, you know, for large molecules is based on the exaggerated pharmacology, right? So it's on target. So that, uh, for instance, uh, a monoclonal antibody, anti-CD20 uh, against the B cells. So when you use that in animal study, or even you use it in the human, that we're going to deplete, you know, all B cells from the circulation. So what the consequence? Because you don't have a B cell, so you don't have that uh, immune protection. So you're going to see the increased risk for infections, right? So you're going to see that in animal, and so you know that's going to happen in humans. So you have to take, you know, measures and to see how you can mitigate the risk. Well, that's the tar the on the target, but you know, the, the antibody also have off-target toxicity, uh, which is 
quite general is that's going to trigger the cytokine release, right? Or the immunogenistic, because it is generally it's immune, immunogenic. So that when you have a cytokine release, so then you can have quite a bit impact uh, to patients, right? So adverse reactions and maybe cause the drug drug interactions, immunogenesis, if it's in, if it's neutralizing, then uh, the you know the, the 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 pharmaceutical biological effect will disappear, right? So all you have to keep increase the dose. So there is also another class of uh, the drug, and you need to have some special consideration is antibody drug conjugate. So you, you touch small molecules with a linker to a large molecule, generally speaking, would be a molecule antibody or fraction of molecule antibody. So then what type of animal studies, non kill study you have to do? So you need to both Guideline for small molecules or large molecules can be applied. So generally speaking, you need to do a full battery of toxic study uh, for the new drug substance because for the drug conjugate, most likely the drug, the active drug substance would be small molecules. So you need to do full battery study for that testing, and you also do some study for the complete, you know, the molecule, which is conjugate. Uh, so do you have to do for each component? Probably you can make a justification because for the uh, molecule antibodies, well, because sometimes those, the each component is already being used. Right, so you have a lot of uh, existing data. So you can use the existing data to support how much, uh, you know, study, additional study you have to use. Yeah. So therapeutic molecule antibodies is, is a very specific, uh, uh, you know, a group of large molecules, and there are many of them, right? So we have discussed, they have uh, non target you know, if they have a non-target specific binding to human tissue, uh, it may have caused a uh, serious consequence, right? So you need to do the cross-activity studies of therapeutic molecular antibodies in human tissue and uh, prior to do the, you know, the phase one trial because it's targeting uh, therapy, but you don't want the molecular antibody of also bound to off-target cause, you know, uh, adverse reactions. So you can use a human panel, sometimes uh, use animal tissue may help, uh, but I think the more relevant would be the human tissue, right, to tell you. We also be careful that the tissue binding per se uh, does not indicate biological activity in vivo. Right, so you know there is bending, but does mean it's going always going to trigger bioactivity, bio, you know, activity or pharmacological reactions, right? And secondly, that because when you use tissue, you use this, you know, kind of the, the tissue slice, that you may expose your the molecular antibody to cytoplasma. Normally, that the antibody in vivo study is not going to bind to the cytoplasma, it's going to be on the membrane. Uh, so, so in that case, when you see there is binding to the cytoplasma, it's generally is not relevant because it's, it's not going to be, um, um, okay, uh, the case when you do uh, in vivo study. So immunogenicity is always the case, uh, the concerns. Um, I think we always say that, you know, the anti-drug antibody when it's produced, how, how can you tell that going to happen? It's because you're going, to change, you're going to see the change in pharmacokinetic, pharmacodynamic profile, right? And also you 
uh, there is the evidence when you do the animal studies. Uh, there is uh, immune-mediate reactions, okay? Having said that, we always say mm, that immunogenicity you observed in animal studies are not always relevant uh, in human, okay? Yeah, just be careful. So the non chemo study, uh, for both the efficacy and the toxicity testing, the non chemo study design should parallel the proposed clinical trials in terms of dose, uh, dosing interval, route, and duration of administration, and, okay, uh, the formulation, no. So required non chemo study are also driven by indications. Okay. So, for instance, repro study is unlikely required for a late stage cancer indication, but it would be required when a new indication for chronic disease is added. So, even that in the first indication for this biological product is may not be required one type of non clinical study, but for other indications, it could be the case that you have to do additional study. So, just be aware. So what kind of indication you are looking for and what type of disease you are going to treat, right? So there is always uh, some problems, uh, you know, encountered with uh, non-clinical uh, studies for biological drugs. Uh, so because you're, I think we, we kind of summarized as to, uh, we probably have uh, all discussed, the testing of pharmacological insensitive species, right? Toxicity, tox, toxicologic evaluation in too few animals because, as we said, you get to use non-human, you know, primate. Uh, you may not have enough animals, or it's too expensive, or there is restrictions. So, uh, evaluation of too few, you know, numbers of dose, or too low a dose, or too short of duration. I think those can be overcome. Uh, and you use a different product formulation in the animal studies, then you know, then you're going to use in human study that you you have a new formulation. So then you have to do breathing study, and you know, you, or you have to justify. Otherwise, the data you generated with uh, you know the early formulation may not be relevant with the you know the human, you know the, the formulation used in human study. So there is a later to, you know, uh, or no histopathological uh, evaluation of animal tissues taken at uh, nec necropsy. Uh, so there is no provision for a recovery period in toxic study designed for products where a uh, you know, pathologic response may be anticipated and uh, positive toxicity funding are seen, right? So there are some, um, you know, limitations for uh, all, sometimes it's mistake or, uh, you know, to use uh, enough animal studies to support humans. So I think at the planning stage, you have to be very careful to plan careful. So, um, so even with the best non clinical design uh, evaluation, unanticipated problem doing different phase of study may delay the product development. So the most common reasons are, so uh, the safety problem in humans that could not have been predicted from the animal studies. I, I think that's probably quite common that uh, for you know for large molecules than small molecules. So poor dose response characterization, you will see that for biological draw, sometimes the, the dose response is not very, is not that clear, right? But also that give you uh, a different perspective for safety. So that safety uh, profile may also, is not gonna change that much when you increase the dose. Uh, finally, because there is lack of long-term talks in the repro studies, and prior to phase three or prior to marketing authorization. So uh, the worst case 
scenario, the regulator may ask you to go back to do additional animal studies. Always, sometimes you can make a justification that you just make a label, say this, you know, this drug is going to cause something based on what the best evidence or knowledge you have, or based on the same class of drug. Right. So the safety guidance, you know, for biological drugs, SH6, also reference to other guidance document, as we have discussed, and you should take into consideration when you develop, right? Okay, so I think um, the summary, this is my last slide. Uh, so I think overall that you should, based on the, you know, for either large molecule, small molecule, you based on the relevant guidance to develop you, you know, uh, a drug uh, study uh, strategy for to support each stage of clinical trials and for marketing authorization. So thank you for your attention.